Hey guys, welcome to the kitchen. No, we're not uh, gonna do a cooking video here this morning, and sorry if I uh, got you all hungry on the on the uh, picture there at the beginning of the video. I knew when I when I seen that picture and uh, when I had stored there that uh, it made me hungry as well. Kind of brings back the old deer camp feelings, and, and uh, everybody likes to this time of the year, obviously, uh, getting out of the woods, and, and this all ties this topic this morning that we're going to talk, talk about ties into that. Whether it's in a restaurant, guys, or whether that's in a uh, deer camp or in your home or whatever that is, home that turns into deer camp. This topic here is, is something that, you know, I labeled it number one thing to ruin a, a, a whitetail hunt or a season, but um, there's a lot of things that, you know, are that rank up there pretty high. But one of the, one of the things is that I see time and time again that I learned years ago is, uh, is just as simple as, uh, you know, a uh, uh, innocent uh, breakfast and gathering and kind of a deer camp uh, approach and it, it can get really out of control in a hurry. And uh, this dates back to the days, that, you know, um, myself and, and uh, my father and my grandfather bringing us up in that atmosphere um, as far as, uh, you know, being in, in a deer camp morning setting, we used to have a uh, an old old uh, shack that we called the buck shack that we were growing up and having that uh, breakfast cooked and and uh, and then you know back at the home farm there and all that ties into this uh, this video is one of the biggest things that I see is is folks not taking the time and really stopping to appreciate uh, what they're dragging back into the woods what the with the smells that they're not leaving at deer camp or they're leaving in the they're not leaving in the restaurant and uh, how that all ties into uh, you know the scent control preparation and everything. And what cracks me up is time and time again, year after year, what I see folks doing is I see folks spending all kinds of money on scent lock and uh, you know, the best scent elimination, whether it's no scent or dead down wind or any of these high, high end, uh, you know, scent control products that actually work. Um, you know, they, they spend all the money on this and, and uh, their wives look at them like they're crazy or their, their spouses. If, you know, we always get asked as a, as a, uh, as hunting, it's like how much does the venison actually cost you? You know, you, you've all heard that uh, by the time you buy all your gear. And then what we do is, the, you know, what I see time and time again is, is uh, you know, we, we kind of expect miracles from that scent lock or that, uh, you know, that scent elimination systems, whether that's clothing or sprays. And then we, you know, it starts, it starts right here in the kitchen. It starts at the beginning of your day. And uh, a lot of times, two different stages of it. But one starts in the kitchen. You know, you get up in the morning, and, and everybody wants to get dressed where it's warm, and uh, you know the the breakfast has been served, and we're all enjoying that deer camp, and and uh, hopefully you know that doesn't give you an upset stomach when you're in the tree stand kind of thing. But uh, you know it all starts here, and that aroma that you're creating inside of that deer camp, guys, is huge. It's not only the uh, things to watch in the camp setting are not only the uh, food that we're talking about and the smells and, and all that, that uh, you know, clings to, your, clings to your clothing, but then like wood stoves and campfires and all of this, like I said, you know, I see all these folks spending all that money on that, the high-end products, and then they're sticking all, especially if it's wool, like sticking all, you know, that, that scent to it, and then transferring that out into the woods. And, you know, some guys, uh, you, you know, they'll get on here, hunters will get on here and they'll say, you know, well, we've been hunting that way, I've been smoking in a tree stand for years and I kill deer. Well, you know, there's there's a possibility that you probably do that and you probably get away with it, but the, the major, it's not, like I always say, it's not the majority and it's not, uh, it's probably in an area where your mature deer um, level or your mature, mature deer age structure isn't as high as it is in some areas. So this is kind of a across the board, you know, theory um, that I'd like to talk about is it's, make sure that if you're going to have a deer camp situation or the next step is you go out into a hunting maybe you don't cook in the morning and you get dressed you know dressed at the truck you go through all the preparations that you think are good and then afterwards everybody's hungry they get out of the woods and they go to the restaurant which is a great place to gather and i and i hope you support your local uh restaurants wherever you hunt across the country whether they're family owned or whatever the case is uh but what happens is is guys will remove all the the outer layer of their clothing and all their, all their camos, and then they leave their boots on and they go into the restaurants. Well, it's not only the smell in a restaurant that you're attracting to them clo that clothing, you're also sticking that wax. One of the biggest things that's overlooked, I think, is your, your, all that uh, cleaning materials and that wax and everything that they put on the floor is, uh, sticks to the bottom of your, your hunting boots instead of you switching your boots out. And then, uh, you know, come, come the evening sit, we're, uh, we're right back in there putting our camos back on and uh, we've been in those boots and they've been, you know, everywhere from the, uh, the 
uh, everywhere from them polished floors in the restaurant. They've been to the gas stations with us. They've been all over, all over town that day. They've been in the barns, in and out of the barns, wherever, you know, on the carpet in the back of the cap camp or where, whatever the case is, there's a million different things that all that gets tracked through right back to your tree stand. And so a lot of it is, is left on the ground. A lot of it is just stuck on the uh, clothing and it's hard. It's very, very hard. And I don't know if there's any actual studies out there that really confirm, uh, you know, how much, how much, you know, these scent elimination sprays will kill. Uh, you know, like this morning I cooked some eggs and, and some uh, sausage here, you know, um, and the whole, whole house, uh, you know, the uh, square footage of the house here is pretty good size and it just everywhere you go in the house, it's just, it's, you can smell it and you can't get away from it. I always bank on, I always go back to the, to respecting the uh, maturity, the mature, the mindset of a mature whitetail buck. And if you act that way, you'll be ready for that preparation. You'll be ready for that moment when it happens. And if not, it's going to sooner or later, it's going to sneak up and bite you in the butt. Now, as, as especially males, maybe so much, not the females out there, but the males, will you ever be uh, honest and, and say that, yes, I got busted because I wore my clothes into the restaurant or I didn't spray my boots or I was cooking eggs and bacon in my blind and will you ever, you know, will a lot of people ever say, yes, that's the reason that he winded me? Probably not, but that's, you know, that's on, on your shoulders on that one. But um, the fact of the matter is, is being in the world that I've been in, you know, from a deer camp situation as a kid all the way up into, uh, as, you know, through being a guide and now as a, as a property or, you know, whitetail consultant, I see this all over the country and it happens time and time and time again. And uh, it's something to really watch for. So if you are watching this and you're in one of those uh, situations where maybe you've done that in the past, really go the extra mile this year to take that out of the equation. And uh, I think you'll see, you'll see a lot of different um, ways that the deer move around your property and the, how they react around you when you're in the tree stand. And a lot of it all ties back to the, uh, you know, the, the ever so sought after uh, deer camp breakfast. Thanks guys.